here in Maine. And just a few considerations. This is the day after the uh, Feast of the Ascension. A few considerations. On the Tuesday of the Apostle, the Saint Matthias. So Jesus the Apostle, St. Matthias, that uh, there were 12 apostles, and then the time came on Ascension Thursday, where after 43 days after the resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his Judas was dead and gone, and there were only 11 faithful apostles. And so there have 11 faithful apostles, and Judas is dead and gone, and the, the apostles were told to wait to wait until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so St. Peter, however, realized, that by coming to the Holy Ghost, rather, that they must finish the work, that there, there, that there must be 12 apostles. Just like there were 12 disciples, I mean, 12 tribes in the Old Testament, 12 sons of Israel, so there must be 12 apostles whenever the Holy Ghost comes. And so, therefore, St. Peter inspired by the Holy Ghost, stood up amongst the other apostles, and he said yesterday, he said, there were 11 of us, but Judas has gone to his own place, and Judas has betrayed, and he must be replaced. And we see here by the considering of replacing. We say, uh, some of the saints tell us that each of the souls, uh, the, the devils in hell, all fell into hell, and that their number is to be replaced, and they're replaced by the saints of heaven, all those who go to heaven between the time of Adam, or the first to go to heaven, Abel, when he was killed, until the very ending of the world, when the last person shall die and go to heaven. And then we are filling up with a number of the vacancies left by the devils. And so that there must be a filling of the vacancies of, of, of that were left in, in heaven by the devils falling with Lucifer into hell, and that there must be a replacement. That whenever someone goes to hell, they are always forgotten and they're always abandoned, and they're always finished. And they will always be replaced, so there'll be nothing, there'll be no holes in heaven. But the greatest hole that there ever could be was the one left by Judas, because he was one of the twelve that spent time with our Lord. And St. Clement of Alexandria says, there were twelve that spent time with him, and they were chosen directly by Jesus Christ. The twelve were still chosen directly by our Lord. But then Judas betrayed then St. Peter stood up and he said, well, there must be someone to take the place. Now, even though there's someone that comes at the 11th hour, the someone comes at the very end, there must be someone to take the place. Still, that someone is going to be chosen by God, and there are some requirements of that someone. So that the 12 apostles, that they were with, spent three years with Christ. And so what did St. Peter say were the requirements? There must be someone who was with us from the very beginning, from the time of John's baptism until the crucifixion. It must be someone who had a witness of all the miracles that happened, and someone that heard the teaching of Jesus Christ. Even if he was not one of the immediate twelve, he was one of the seventy-two disciples, and he was one of the, not all seventy-two disciples were there at the very, very beginning, but some of them were there at the very beginning, and one of them was Matthias, and another was Joseph Barsabbas. And so they said, we'll take these two and let God choose the one that he wants. So that when God comes and spreads his faith, he spreads the faith throughout the entire world, he will baptize people that accept the faith. The Ethiopian, for instance, when he met St. Philip, he, and he was reading the book of Isaiah, but he didn't know anything about Christ. He couldn't understand. And then Philip the deacon appeared to him, and then St. Philip explained to him about Christ. And then they drove by a piece of water in his, in his chariot, and, 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 and Philip said, the Ethiopian said, can I, is there nothing preventing me from being baptized? Surely I can be baptized. And St. Philip said, sure, we immediately are baptized. Now this is the way it is with baptism. This is the way it is even with the sacrament of confirmation. There can be baptism and confirmation done at the same time. In the Eastern Church, one is baptized and immediately confirmed. But it is not the way it is with priesthood. It's not the way it is with apostleship. The apostle requires something more. Even in the time of great crisis, there was no greater need than 2,000 years ago when the whole world needed to be baptized, the whole world needed apostles, the whole world needed, needed to be priests and bishops all throughout the world. And everywhere where the saints went, they baptized on day one. They confirmed on day one very often. But apostles aren't made on day one. 
This isn't how apostles are formed. Our St. Peter could have said, well, Judas committed suicide, Judas betrayed, let's find someone whom God chooses. He may choose whomever he wishes to be made the priest, to be made the bishop. But they didn't do that. He said, there must be a condition, says St. Peter, who was with us from the beginning, who had heard the teachings of Christ, who had seen the miracles, who had been a witness, then this can be an apostle. And hence we learn that even in the time of crisis, even in the time of great difficulty, there must be a certain preparation of priests. This is one of the problems now in the traditional movement, that we have a, we have a need for priests everywhere in the world, and there's a great need for priests, and some, uh, some, some of the bishops, garage bishops, they will ordain anybody that moves. If you're a male and you got baptized and you say you believe in Jesus, hands are going on top of your head and you're becoming a priest. But St. Peter didn't do that. St. Peter said there must be someone who was with us, someone who heard the words of Christ, someone who understood his teaching. And then St. Iacuno of Alexandria says, note this concerning St. Matthias. And not just Matthias, but all of the apostles. They were not chosen because they were worthy. St. Matthias was not chosen because he was worthy, but because he would become worthy. He was not chosen because he was already perfect, but because he would accept perfection. And hence it is, when the young man is about to be ordained a priest, we will find all of them that they're not worthy, they're not ready to be priests. And we'll find if there are 100 men to be ordained, 100 of them are not ready. They are not worthy. And yet, there must be a certain preparation, that is, they must, know, they must have heard the words of Christ, which means they must know a little bit of their doctrine. They must have seen his miracles, maybe but must be witnesses to the truth that they really believe that doctrine, and they believe that it affects the real world, and they have faith. And then they can be back, they can be ordained. But when they're ordained, they're still not ready. Who is chosen? The one who is chosen by God. Right? Let's be quiet. Don't worry about it. The one who is chosen by God. Who is ready? The one chosen by God. And hence, there's a third part of the choosing. Hence, when St. Peter said, these two are ready, he said, we will draw lots. We will draw lots. And they drew lots. And the one lot fell to St. Matthias. And not the St. Barsabbas, St. Joseph. He's also a saint. But he was not meant to be an apostle. And Matthias was chosen to be an apostle. Hence, we recognize, our Lord also said, when the harvest indeed is great, there's going to be a great harvest. There are need for souls that need Christ everywhere. But pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send laborers into the harvest. That very statement means, who's a laborer? He needs to know a little bit about planting crops. He needs to know a little bit about sowing seed. He needs to know a little bit about pulling weeds. He needs to know a little bit about work. He doesn't have to know a great deal, but he has to have a minimum knowledge. He has to know a little bit. And hence the tradition of the church is, when they're choosing the priests, that they must have a certain minimum knowledge. They must have a certain minimum capacity. And then they can be priests. And St. Thomas explains that the priest is not for himself. He is for the church. And hence, there must be certain minimum requirements. Minimum requirements of a minimum health. Minimum requirements of a minimum use of the mind. Minimum requirements of a minimum knowledge of the faith. That he has to have some kind of requirements before he can go out and be a preacher of the word of God. That there's some kind of preparation. Hence, there should be a religious formation. That's why in the worst history, in the worst times of the church, in persecution in communist Russia, in persecution in Mexico, in persecution in the first 300 years of the church, there will always seminary preparation. There was always some kind of preparation of a young man to become a priest. He would have to live with an older priest. He'd have to be trained. He'd have to learn the sacred scripture. He'd have to learn the teachings of the church. And then he would be ordained a priest and then sent out on the battlefield. And then so St. Peter chose Matthias, the Holy Ghost is involved in the teaching and the choosing, and, that, and yet he had to, to do, make some minimum requirements of the church. St. Peter made them. He had to be with us from the beginning. He had to witness the miracles of Christ. He had to actually believe in those miracles. And then he could be ordained. And hence in our times in the crisis of the church, one well, the most necessary thing is a seminary. The most necessary thing is the formation of priests for the continuation of the future of the apostleship of the church. One who's a baby boy can be, can be ordained. But he doesn't have the apostleship that St. Matthias had. He doesn't have the apostleship that the, 12, the other 12 apostles had. Even including Judas, who betrayed Christ and went to hell. 
But there must be a, prepar a certain kind of preparation. And as God has arranged that in every age of the church, there will always be preparation. There will always be some place, or some order, religious order, formed by God and allowed by God for the continuation of the human, Holy Roman Catholic Church through each age of history. In our age of history, there needs to be a seminary. There needs to be the formation of priests. There needs to be a preparation of them with the knowledge and teaching that was handed down for the last 2,000 years. And then young men must come forward. And two requirements, two requirements that the gospel lays out for the young man. One, says the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel today, you are the salt of the earth. And secondly, you are the light of the world. What are the conditions of salt and light? The way you make salt, you have salt water, and you lay salt water in the, in, in the ocean. And the, and the water is driven from the ocean into what's called salt pans. They're very shallow. Very shallow, maybe less than a foot deep. And the salt water is brought into these salt pans. And the water sits in the salt pans. The sun beats down upon it, and the water is evaporated out. And the salt pan turns completely white. And then the workers come out and collect the salt. The sun bakes the water out of the salt, and the sea salt is made. In places where we used to say mass in India, they have massive salt pans. And mountains and mountains of salt down in Tutikarin, in the land where our Father Pancras used to say mass, one of our priests in Kentucky. Massive, massive mountains of salt that they pull out from these salt pans. But how is salt made? It, it is water is made shallow, and the sun beats down upon the water, and the water is evaporated, and what remains is salt. The Lord said, you are the salt of the earth. Now what is the condition of becoming salt? We have to allow ourselves to be burnt by a heat that comes from the outside. That is the power of the heat that comes from the outside, which is God giving us the power of priesthood, and God giving us a depth of understanding. St. Thomas Aquinas, who is the most intelligent mind that God ever created, he said himself he learned more from the tabernacle than he learned from books. And he learned a great deal from books. What is necessary to be a priest, to have the knowledge of a priest, to become like salt water that is laid in a thin salt pan that allows the sun to bake out the water, to take that which is our natural self, let it evaporate away and remain with only the salt which preserves food. And the second is a similar thing, which is you are the light of the world. Light burns in a candle. The wax has to be malleable. The wax has to be flammable. The wax has to be able to melt. And so what are the characteristics of a priest? He is one who should be able to come into the, into the, into the, uh, the, the seminary or into the house of religious formation and be like unto wax. He has to be able to be melted by fire. He has to be like water that is laid firm, in salt water laid firm in the salt pan. If you drink salt water, you die. Whoever drinks salt water will necessarily die. But without salt, you have no life. What has to be done? The water must be removed from the salt. Then the salt can be applied to meat and it can preserve it from degradation. And so therefore the salt, they must be like salt water that allows the natural parts of himself, which are not beneficial to be with salt, let them be evaporated away by the power of the divine working. And let him be like a candle who is able to be melted. Matthias was like unto this, and God chose Matthias. And then he went out and was later martyred in Ethiopia and was crucified for our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must pray to the Lord of the harvest, the ascended laborers of the harvest, and that laborers are chosen, there must be a certain preparation. So we must pray for vocations. They are needed in every age, and especially in our age, to pass on the faith. These vocations must be witnesses to Christ that firmly believe in all the miracles and all the words in history contained in sacred scripture. And they must also have a formation by which they believe all the doctrines, that they heard the words, the words of the teachings of the popes down the last 2,000 years, and the teachings of the fathers of the church, and not just and none of the garbage that comes from the heresies and evils of wickedness of Vatican II. In any case, we pray the Lord of the harvest, that he send laborers into the harvest, and that uh, these laborers be prepared and formed to go out and carry Christ to souls by being like water, salt water spread out, that it might the water will be melted out, they become the salt of the earth. And being like a candle that is able to be melted by the heat of the fire that comes from the Holy Ghost. Those are going to pose that question to all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.